Oh, nice. Oh, that makes us happy. But not next week, because next one's a pre-recorded, but the weekend after, Mark is going to show you, because every week he learns something that people find really difficult. He's going to show you how to cook the perfect Yorkshire pudding. I've never been cut from a and show And he has before. never, cut ever... Shows, you were cutting me yesterday. <laughs> he's never, ever cooked Yorkshire pudding, and next week he's going to make perfect oh, Yorkshire about puddings. That. Yeah, not next week, week after. All right, lovelies, come over to YouTube. We're ready for you. See you in a minute. Don't you're, go live. You're live. Oh. We're live, you donut. I just wanted to check something. What? Oh, the K. Yeah. I just wanted to check what tattoo Kay's already story. said about a tattoo. No, right. <laughs> you donut. Where is it? Have you got it there? Yeah, I've got the story. Good right, morning, so everyone. Morning. How are we all? How are you? How, what sort of a weekend did you have? Hi, B. Bia. B. Miss Sadie C. Fiona Reed. Well, hang I on. just want to check something about Kay in the paper because she told me something about a tattoo that I don't know. If she hasn't said it in the paper, oh, okay. I can't say it yet. Okay. So give me a minute. Right. You carry on. All right, darling. Uh, morning, Sarah Fox. Um, anyone in touch with Faith Goodman? Absolutely. I've touched base with her. She's fine. She's just dealing with some a couple of things and she's going to be back very soon. So, no, she's absolutely fine. But thank you for asking. And I did reach out directly to oh, her. Right. We do get worried, uh, you know, when various members... Is she OK? Disappear. Yeah, she's yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were saying something else to happen. No. God, in a minute, you're going to be plugged into what's happening over Hello! <laughs> <laughs> um, it's Monday morning, guys. Uh, which is, yeah, Monday morning. Um, Lee Durrant, hope you're well. Hope, you, hope you're feeling better, Lee. And we will sort out that Instagram live very, very soon. Uh, Georgina Keane, amazing weekend. Watched all the Curly Cooks of Croydon on YouTube and it's and it inspired my cooking for the week. Oh, you just said that on Instagram. That this makes us happy. It does make us happy. And, and I have to say, I, I'm really enjoying, obviously, you're a great presenter, but it's really nice discovering Dina's natural capacity to fart, swear and cook great food and be a great presenter. Do you know what's brilliant? And, and we've had so many comments along the lines of, oh, it's like the best TV not show, not on TV. And the thing is, to be able to discover new talent is somebody else that we're really excited about that we've discovered, if you like. But, and it's your own sister who's yeah. been living next door. Yeah. She's an absolute... I cannot tell you how difficult it actually is to cook live and to talk, mm. and to be on top of everything, mm. and to be, I mean, it's carnage. She likes to think she's more organised than me, but she's not. Well, when she left, it was desperate. Oh, my God, and her station was terrible, and then she messes up my station mm. as well. But, yeah, so it, it's so, like, and I just love that you're loving it too. It's so nice, so nice. Mm. Oh, can everyone send a big hug to Beryl McNally? She had a sudden death, my best friend. Oh, it's ben. terrible, hurting, sweet, oh, sweetheart. I, I had, well, I had the same thing in my 20s, and... Oh my God! It's kind of weird. I mean, you know, there's there's a there's almost there's almost it's not a different grief, but there's something weirder about a friend going. Mm. It's, it's it's odd. So everyone Didn't send you, you a hug. Expect it even less. Yeah, yeah. I think that might. I be suppose part from of it. such a young age, you you you're preparing. We're always sort of preparing for losing our family, but yeah, I never really think about my friends. Yeah. Dying. Yeah, no, I it's agree. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So sending you sending you lots of love. Um, lots of love. I've got an exciting week. I'm meeting, you're going to hear a lot about Tom, uh, Lily and Catherine, my new, my new actors. My new actors in a new film. So I'm meeting all, all of them this week, which I'm very excited about. Um, News-wise, we're going to pass, gloss over or pass over all of the news. Zahawi has gone. But here's the big question I want you to answer. If he's broken the ministerial code, which he obviously has, why hasn't Suella Braverman gone, who also broke the ministerial yeah. code? Well, it's, it's, it's just curious, it's a bit isn't it? It's a chess game, isn't it? So the, the Tories are kind of wriggling around. Uh, Rishi Sunak feels about as powerful as a, as a sort of chocolate frog <laughs> in the sun. Dipped in tea. <laughs> yeah, dipped in tea. Um, oh, how, Russ, it's Russ's you know birthday. I mean, I know Russ, not... ouch, hey. It's your birthday. We'll sing happy Russ, birthday. Russ, we will sing happy birthday but, to you. But can I just say, meanwhile, Boris Johnson is attempting to say uh, Putin threatened to fire a missile at me. No, no, no. <laughs> look, look, right, now, I don't know much about such things. But... <laughs> what missile fire? No, it just... Did anyone feel a bit unnerved by the fact that Boris is telling those stories? I mean... I know what you mean. I've never heard a Prime Minister discussing phone calls, you know, at such a high level like that. 
for me, it feels like, and I could be wrong, a bit of grandstanding, a bit of showing off. Yeah, big enough In a role. very, very sensitive situation. Volatile, even. Volatile, possibly. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, and it just, but and the other thing is, I don't know if you've actually heard him saying it, Mark. He says, "You know, very cold weather, you know, you know, we don't need to take a minute to swim this aisle, or something such like that." Well, what did he say? You know, were you covering yourself by the sentence that followed it by saying, or something like that? Because I don't think you should be quoting Putin if you're not one hundred percent sure. It just made me feel anxious. Well, no, no, but also, is there not still some other ministerial code that you don't reveal this kind of high-level intelligence? Because when he talked about Putin, I mean, I know this isn't true. Putin sounded quite nice because he said, "Look, I don't want to worry you, Boris." (laughs) But I'm possibly going to fire a missile at you, and I don't want you to take it personally. It's very easy. It's very easy. It'll take five seconds. Yeah. Did anyone else feel a little bit? Because I thought. Was this on the Nadine Dorries? Is is he going to keep on spilling things like this? I mean, obviously, it's again, it's picking his part. We know he want. he, He. We all know he wants to come back. And is that him looking like the macho man? But I meet you. You don't want that kind of posturing. In uh, such Anne a Murray, yeah, situation. no, I agree. Anne Murray, I prefer your name for it rather than the Perfumo affair. The Perfumo affair. <laughs> I think that's quite funny. Don't know if that was a typo. Mm-hmm. Um, good ship lollipop. I haven't paid attention to politics for a month. I haven't a clue. You haven't missed anything really. It's all the same old shit. Uh, I just had my birthday on Saturday. Lots of birthdays. Linda Beatty. We'll sing you we'll a sing posthumous at the end. birthday. At um, the end. What was I going to say? Okay, so the first story. Well, exactly, Rebecca. Well, Boris doesn't think the rules apply to him. So he's probably, yeah. But there probably is a whole load of rules about about divulging that kind of information (coughs) while he's still at war. I'm developing a cough. (coughs) Sorry to anyone on headphones. Now, that would be beautiful on a 55-inch screen, wouldn't it? (laughs) Um, Okay, right. We can't show you this and we can't play you this. Um, But Sam Smith... Anyone a Sam Smith fan? Let's ask you. Let's do a poll. Are you a Sam Smith fan? Let's not forget, Sam Smith goes by the pronoun of they and them um, and wants to be referred to as they and them. There's no, there's no sort of other category. Uh, are you a Sam Smith fan? Are you a Sam Smith fan? There's one song that he released. Yeah, what was the one we the, all loved? The girls used to play, and it was kind of one of his songs that was given a real dance beat, which what I really liked. It? I really liked that song. What was his song. big major, major hit? There. Big major, major hit. Oh, there, big major, yeah, major no. hit. Um, what was it? Oh, look, Trina Cotton's watching us on a 50-inch screen. It's the five extra, 55 <laughs> or whatever it is. Uh, not really. Christina Bet, yes. He's gone strange, says Jackie Key. Certainly a different video, isn't it, Edward Bevington? Well, what? It's. i tell you how I came across this, and then, of course, it was being talked about on the radio this morning. Um, I was, I, I don't, my Twitter, Twitter doesn't come up on my phone. Yeah. And then it did yesterday. And when it, when I sort of unlocked my phone and it came up, I thought it was a porn film. Oh. I mean, because it was small and I couldn't, all I could see was people pumping each other from behind. Or so he immediately s- turned it off. Simulating. So I immediately clicked on it. I can't to, watch this. To have a closer look. Because <laughs> I thought this can't be And then showed it to all your friends. <laughs> yeah, and then sent it to everyone. No, anyway, um, and I just want to know, I, I just want to know what you think about whether the outrage here is in and of itself prejudicial and all that kind of stuff. So their their video was is incredibly raunchy. It's lots of simulated sex. It's lots of people in suspenders. It it kind of looks like it's kind of suggesting it's taking place in a at a sex party or something like that. But there's one particular scene as well where someone, albeit that they're firing water into his face, it, it kind of looks like someone's weeing on him. Oh. Uh, sorry, weeing on them. Sorry, I'm, I do apologise. Um, and Sam Smith says in their Twitter feed where, he, where they dropped a clip, I'm not here to make friends. Oh, that's the title of the, of the, of the song. I'm not here to make friends. So it, it, which is a line, isn't it, that everyone says in Love Island, isn't it? I'm yeah. not here to make friends. Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, I'm here to look for a connection. So some people online, obviously a lot of kind of people went online and said, no effing need, it's blatant, tacky, sexualised bullshit. As a mum of teenagers, I'm sick of seeing people using shit like this to sell their music. What, what are your opinions on this, guy? Should, should, um, should explicit music videos come with a health warning, an 18 certificate? But how in a social media age do you control that? Oh, and is the, backlash, just... is the backlash 
in many regards, transphobic, homophobic, gender fluid. I just think that we've just, probably, there's probably some of that in there, but, but I just think we've been having this conversation, really, over 25, 30 years, haven't we? Which one? About the Mary Whitehouse? About raunchy, raunchy videos. Yeah. Well, I mean, can I just I'm far say... more concerned about the pornography that is available to any child of any age yes. through, through a few clicks than I am about raunchy music videos. They've been there since time began. That's how, that's how, since, since videos began. Well, Sarah Bigley and makes a really important point. Madonna did similar things exactly, to shop say, decades ago with Justify yeah, My Love. and she is now. She's still doing. I fell, I fell into a Madonna wormhole about midnight last night. I don't know why I did that. I was just like, wow, whoa, okay. Um, well, what's she up to It moment? doesn't, well, she just... She do, I've never recovered she's from just, her odd film about She's pasta. just living remember? life, man. She is living life. She, in one of her um, exactly, Russ, Instagram, in one of her inst on one of her Instagram posts, she's in the back of a car, going to a Harry Styles gig with her son, right, and David. I think it's the son David, and she's just swigging wine from a bottle. Do we know? What's it to Mark? Did she? I don't remember Madonna being a big boozer, and so she was absolutely. Well, she appeared to be absolutely slaughtered. I don't um, remember her. I think, she, I think she's getting old, you know, extravagantly. I mean, she's really going. Yeah, for... she's living life large. Yeah, I mean, but I'm, as I just said, it I'm... doesn't offend me in any way. I mean, I, I, I tell you what I find really difficult sometimes, much more so than that, is that are these videos where it's just one, and and I've even I've even mellowed out on this. I used to find it so um, disturbing. Videos where it's just one thing after another so derogatory about women. And then all the women have got their bums up in the air. You know, it's just, I just find it a bit repulsive, really. Right. But I don't think it's dangerous. Mm. I think I think kids move on. Mm. I, I'm not like, I mean, we've had loads of conversations with the girls, haven't we, about those sorts of songs and those sorts of videos mm. where it's just pure, you know, sexualization of women in the most base level way and they're very they know they well, just like take it they take it with a pinch of salt well, yeah and i think i, I think it's hard to shock us these days don't I, you? Well, I was going to say unfortunately whether we like it or not kids teenagers have probably seen f stuff that's far more explicit yeah. than sam smith's video yeah. but also if you think of a lot i'm thinking of uh, the kanye west video where he got on a bike and there was was there it was it it wasn't actually meant to be kim it was one simulated. of the simulated simulated sort of yeah. sex on a bike i just find it unsafe but i don't get angry it's just that thing again isn't it what are the papers wanting us to be angry about today so we're not angry about anything else and i just think it's just trying to whip us up <laughs> I personally think it's, though Sam Smith identifies as they, them, and is in, is in no way sort of transitioning, I think it's, what would you call it when it's not necessarily transphobic? I think it's sort of gender fluid phobic. You know? Almost, yeah. It's like the outrage is about the fact that someone who doesn't identify uh, with the, you know, in terms of the status quo of society and most people's, you know, prejudicial thoughts, it's like, how dare they? Yeah. How dare they? It's so. classic Daily Mail outrage, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Kate Farha thinks some. Sorry, oh, pull it down. Think some music videos have always been a bit raunchy. Yeah, but could the backlash be because it's Sam Smith? Exactly. It's not. Yeah, it's not the typical sexualization of women. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Well, this next story is what you were um, looking at at the beginning. That's Kay. Kay. Kay Adams. Have you, have you seen Kay's? Tattoo. Can you show now, us? Now, the other week, she was talking about this on Loose Women. She'd been talking about it for a while, actually. Mm. But I did not think for a minute she was actually going to have this done. And uh, she sent a photo to me and Jane yesterday. And I was shocked because I thought, because she was like, I don't know if I'm going to have it here or I'm going to have it here or I'm going to have it here. So I just assumed it was going to be a, a tiny little tattoo. Um but actually, it's it's all the way down her arm, and it's I'm over I'm over twenty over twenty one, and I think it's lovely. Oh, uh, so explain. I'm over twenty one. I really like it. Over twenty one, and it's right the way down her arm. Have you got a picture of it? Let me see if I can no. get it up. Um, and hang on, <laughs> look at her face. She said she's absolutely thrilled, thrilled with it. 
over 21. Oh. It's well, really I'm lovely sorry, writing. You might have said because I was doing something. So the What's significance the yeah. of this is um, that she said, you know, she looks, obviously she lost her mum a few years ago. Her and her mum were incredibly no, close, incredibly close. And then she really went through it, bless her, Kay, you know, with her mum being poorly before she lost her and, and her dad. And she said she looks at photos or, or she doesn't really get that connection like right. with her mum. Not, not the connection, but she's she wanted something other than that. Right. And her mum had this thing, which you all know about Kay, because we've had so many jokes about this in the past. Um, Kay has this thing about her age. Um, and... So did her mum. She tells this great story one day of when uh, her mum was stopped for speeding by the police. Right. And uh, Kay and her brother were in the back of the car and the policeman asked her for her age and she said she wasn't going to tell him. <laughs> and he went, no, 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 we need your age. I suppose they were in Scotland. And she went, no, no, I'm not telling you my age. I'm over 21. <laughs> anyway, they ended up getting taken to the police station. Oh, my God. That's how you know, um, determined her mum was that she wasn't going to say her age. So this was her thing with her mum. So she had, uh, so, yeah, so sentimental in such a lovely mm. way. So she's had this put on, put on. She's had it. Yeah, I think it's very it. tasteful as well. It's, re it's really nice. I've it's just, beautifully I done. And I, Kay just looks so happy that I can't wait to have a proper chat with oh, her about it. That's good. But, um... I know that there will be plenty of people that think you shouldn't get Well, I just asked the question, is certain... there a certain age over which you shouldn't have tattoos? Because we've been talking about having one, haven't we? Me, you and the girls, all the same one. Obviously when Kiki's of age. Yeah, well, we, Maddie will have hers done first, but then Kiki when she's older, and it's the same words, which we'll, we'll show you when we finally have it done. Um, and it's so weird, like, because you do, that little part of you goes, hmm. Nearly 60? Is this that thing that people start doing where they're panicking and doing crazy things like, you know, tattoos? And, and it, will people think I'm a sad fuck for having a tattoo? And then I came around all the way around that and then just going back to what I always come back to, which is what the hell's it got to do with anybody else? Well, I'm pleased you said that about the sad fuck thing. I mean, the, <laughs> the, <laughs> no, because certainly I think it looks great and I certainly didn't think this about Kay at all when you told me first. Um, but thinking about it in terms of myself, Maddie always says to me, I'm really surprised, Dad, that in your wilderness years you never ended up getting a tattoo. Yeah. And when she said that, I thought, that is curious. It's the kind of it's the kind of thing I would have done in a sort of, you know, odd state of mind. Filmed in lots of tattoo parlours, had them offered to me in, in many places that I'd filmed in. And I toyed when I was filming. Do you remember in San Francisco I was filming with the Star Wars accredited tattooist? And yeah, he, yeah. he offered me an R2-D2 on my God, shoulder. God, what did you have? I didn't have time. Well I was on such a tight schedule. I had to leg R2 it out. R2-D2 on your buttocks. On my buttocks, yeah, exactly. Um, I remember someone close to our family years ago getting a tattoo, posting it on Facebook, oh. and, and me being... And, and my sense of it being, he was a man of a certain age, thinking this is a man trying to hold on to his youth. And I, re I was really judgy. Yeah. I was really I just judging. don't have that anymore. And I love, love, love Kay's story about this. Now, you, mm. you may or may not know about Kay's podcast, um, all about being 60. Check it out wherever you get your mm. podcast. Um, and, you know, she has really struggled. So She's really struggled with getting to 60 and what that means to her and everything. And I just, I just, I, I'm just so happy she's done this because... She worries, like we all do, about being judged for her age. I mean, we laugh about this all the time. She goes, oh, you know, at our age. You know, what are people thinking about our age? And it's just, I think it's really important to just keep thinking, to give less of a fuck, actually, what people think. Absolutely. What, the, what does well, it actually Well, I, I absolutely matter? agree. And my opinion on this has changed over the years. I'm and I've got to the point where I want a spider web tattooed on my forehead. No, that's, um, a, bit, that's a bit much. Someone's just, you know, accurately, accurately pointed out, my mum got a tattoo when I was very young, actually, and she'd come out as gay. And she got the two, um, you know, the female symbols, and they were interlinked. And That's they, and she had it on her hip. And I asked her the other day. I said, if you saw, and it was red. It was, a, it was a red tiny thing. And I remember her showing me. And as a child, I mean, I was still trying to calculate what the hell gay meant because I just, as far as I was concerned, you just had relationships with people. I, it didn't mean anything. <laughs> My mum, mum, you had relationships with lots of people. But yeah. she got, she got these two tattoos, and they were really cool. I remember thinking, that's so subtle. 
Yeah, it's it is so very cool. subtle. And for years, got it. when we used to go swimming, I thought, oh, she's bleeding. <laughs> um, where's that? I just wanted, there was a good comment there about a forensic. Oh, here we go, creator holic. A forensic pathologist said everyone should have tattoos. It helps identify bodies. She told her daughters to have them. Oh, well, you know, oh. our daughter has tattoos and she really, really gets something from it, doesn't mm. she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said it, she finds it really empowering, makes her less self-conscious about her body. And I can kind of understand. I just, we grew up in an age where just tattoos were just a no, weren't they? Well, like, unless, 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 you were, unless you were a fisherman. Yeah, it was just like, it was just, you know, it was, you were a disappointment if you had tattoos. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really shifted that. I do love it. I love it when, when a tattoo has real meaning. I really love that. Yeah, Lee, you say the only tattoo that's weird is having someone's name. <laughs> I'm thinking of yeah. um, Johnny wrong. Depp when he was with Winona Ryder and he turned it into Wino, didn't he? Um, <laughs> but Maddie has her sister's name, Kiki, on her, on her wrist. And I think that's, that's very sweet. Can I see this one? I can't uh, Chinese say that certain tattoos can give you insight. Oh. I think it's a little bit like wearing jewellery and clothes. I don't mean an armour in a bad way, but I do think it's a little bit of kind of protecting yourself as well mm. with a sort of signature you. I mean, it's, it's adorning yourself with something, isn't it? Mm. Um, Danielle, that's interesting, based on what I just said. I find the idea of tattoos quite claustrophobic, like not being able to ever take them off. Claustrophobic. That's interesting. That's word, being enclosed by the ink. Oh, wow. By your thoughts, you've mm. made. Is it? Are, are you a commitment phobe? Mm. Yeah, because <laughs> it's a commitment, yeah, it isn't is. it? It's like, commitment. I, am I really going to want to commit Pete, to this till the day that I yeah. die? But yeah. Pete Davidson obviously is having loads of his kind of covered, isn't he? Because he wants to get in terms of getting more roles and stuff like that. Stuff like that as an actor. I think I think tattoos for a wedding ring are really nice. Yeah, I, I, I wish we'd done that. I sometimes get lost. But Angelina. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I sometimes get lost online when I... Do you ever look at those ones where tattoos go wrong? So, like, I don't know, it'll be a portrait of someone's face and it looks like, I don't oh, know... I love that show. A hamburger. No, yeah. no, but the really bad ones <laughs> yeah, where no, they That had... show where they try and fix them, it's so <laughs> yeah, funny. Yeah, but, it, you know, and they have, I don't know, they have, like... They'll have Johnny Depp's face, but it looks like... Oh, Danielle. Know, Boris Johnson. Danielle, actually, I am a commitment oh. phone. Oh, there you go, that's funny. <laughs> well, Maybe you could have a tattoo that challenges that in you. Yeah. And then maybe it'll be something <laughs> that you will that you will look to when you feel like that commitment phobe mm. vibe is rising in you. Yeah. I remember being, this was a curious one, I remember being, I don't know if we have any Jewish followers here, I, I remember being at school with someone who was Jewish and her her grandmother had survived Auschwitz mm. and obviously they had the numbers. Oh, yeah. And she got the same number as her grand oh grandmother God, tattooed because she wanted to feel like she'd shared in what her grandmother had gone through. I wonder what her grandmother thought of that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I never really asked that. Oh, I remember God. just saying, why have you got a number on it? And she Because I remember somebody that. saying to me um, that they, that in, within their family, and she similarly, she had a grandfather who had um, a tattoo, that they found it so offensive if they got tattoos. Like right. she said, I will never get a tattoo because for them it was obviously yeah. such a mm. traumatic thing. Okay. So there, it's, it always amazes me how, I mean, we always, on Loose Women over 25 years, the amount of times the conversations come up with tattoos and we say, we can talk about tattoos again. And they say, everyone always wants to hear about tattoos. Funny, isn't it's it? It's funny, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Always a good chat. Um, I want to know what you think about this. This is a story coming out of Canada, um, but you could imagine it happening here. Um, and in fact, we went to a show where this didn't happen consciously, but do you remember where we were almost the only white people in the audience? We had such a wonderful time with this play, but could hear that so much of it was obviously resonating to the audience, the black audience that kind of was plugged into this, well, entirely black cast. But in Canada, they've got some shows where a couple of theatres for a couple of shows have instigated a black only audience policy um, and of course many people are saying this is racial discrimination against whites and I just wondered whether what you think about this because I'm kind of split because on the one hand it, it is segregationist I mean in the true sense of the word but then again a little bit like you know when you have positive discrimination where women need to be seen in more sort of you know visible positions and we can all talk about whether that's right or not, but I do think there's that thing of if younger girls see women in positions of, of authority, then you know they aspire to that and feel that that's, there's a, that they could they could achieve that. With this, 
Only if they're good at what they do. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Well, yeah, exactly. With this, I wonder whether... So when I, when I first thought, mm, segregationist, is that wise? Should you cut any part of society out of anything? Then I thought, but maybe this is about feeling safe. Given that, predominantly, there's always an aspect of racism towards black people in a way that there isn't against white people. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, these are obviously plays. Uh, one of them is called Is and God Is, this... is which is a re mm. revenge story about two African-American sisters written in 2018. So, but, the, but they've got, and in order to enforce this, they've got non-black, they call them, uh, not security, but kind of ushers, encouraging any people who aren't black not to come in. And I just wondered what you all thought about this. I think it's curious. And I went from thinking, mm, I don't know about that, to mm, I kind of kind of can understand. Um, I'm trying to imagine, because always don't forget, we're looking at this from a position of white privilege, right, aren't we? So mm. I'm trying to inhabit the mind of a of somebody that has always felt excluded. You know, like, I remember... Um, the private school that I went to, mm. uh, just only for a very short time, and there was one black child in my class, and it always struck me, it was like, what does that feel like? What does that actually feel like? I used to imagine if it was the other way round, mm. and it just, it, it's just totally extraordinary. If you actually imagine what that's like the other way round, mm. Mm. that's a big deal. So obviously from my position, um, you know, I'm mixed ethnicity, my father's Arabic, um, but, you know, I, I have that white privilege, obviously, I realise that. Obviously, I would say, no, why do we want to exclude anyone? Why? There's so much division in the world. Why do we want to divide again? Are we not trying to bring people together? But if this is a situation where there's two shows... Yeah. And does it really harm anyone if it's two shows? And yeah. yet if, if there are people that would like to just sit and really have that experience, then I don't know, I'm, I'm a bit torn. It still feels, it feels like we're dividing rather than being together. Yeah, I agree. But that is from a position of white privilege, so I, I'm, you know. I agree. I mean, I was I'm wondering sure. how we would have felt when we saw that play that we saw, and I've got so frustrated, I've forgotten, I've forgotten the name of it. In a weird way, that play helped me understand things and comprehend things. Oh, do you in mean the one about the, um, yeah, the about the, the, the funeral? Boys. The funeral. No, oh. no, no, no. The six boys who were kind of all kind of you know, oh god disenfranchised, so trying to work out what to do, completely made you reevaluate. Not that you have oh, a negative opinion, but on youngsters brilliant. in general. Yeah. But yeah. And I, for me, I would have hated the idea that I couldn't have seen that because even as a kind of liberal-minded, yeah. you know. I'm we learned a hell of a we lot, learned, didn't we? We, we learned, we learned, learned a hell so. But nobody's going to say no white audience whatsoever through a whole run. This is just two shows, isn't it? No, it's, yeah, no, for the run. Oh, for, for the, the whole run? Yeah, for the runs. They're, they're black only. Oh, for the whole run. But it reminds me, back in the 70s, no. my mum used to have feminist meetings. Well, good. in fact, this is a really good, good example. My mum used to have a... In West London, sort of Labyrinth Grove, she used to run a feminist group, and there were about 10, 11, 12 women. Um, then it, I think it evolved into a sort of lesbian feminist group, and and obviously it was only women. And I remember someone coming to the door, I might have shared this before, who said, I'm not coming in because you have a son, um, and we want to be in a totally feminine, safe environment. Can you actually believe that? And like my mum said, my mum said, well, you know, I mean, she, this isn't kind of like trans, uh, what's, what's that, intolerant. She said, well, he could always wear a dress and you wouldn't bother. She said, and she said, you will be grateful if you have a daughter that as a feminist lesbian, I've had a son. Yeah. That's up for debate. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? So that idea of having, and in the, and in the 70s, I remember my mum taking me to places and I'd go in the creche and it was specifically women only. And I think a lot of feminists would argue that was important. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just insane. I there are misunderstood women only AA this. Meetings. This was, I was upstairs um, WhatsApping my friends, but I misunderstood this. I thought this was two shows mm. where there was only going to be black, uh, it was a black only audience. I didn't realise it was the whole run. I think that. Oh, well, uh, well, actually, no, sorry, I could be wrong here. Yeah. Attendees could not be banned from attending the show on a black, oh, no, no, blackout night. Maybe. Maybe some, you're right, I think it might be some of the nights. Yeah, it's I a think blackout some, night, they I call think, it. Uh, yeah. Well, what do you think? Yeah. 
Help us to decide what we think. I've done a poll here. Um, anyone who's black, I I'm confused with the question. So is it right... Oh, yeah, is a black-only audience right or wrong? So is it right for a show that is principally... In, well, is only about uh, an experience or a set of circumstances that affect black people, is it right for those theatres to have nights where they disallow anyone who's white... To attend. This is a theatre in Canada. And this is in Canada this. where they're doing it, Tess. Sorry if that yeah. wasn't clear. Um, so, Don't yeah, test. you know, so, so. So, what do you think, guys? Um, you, do, do, do. Lisa Wayman, years ago I had a date and he took me to Brixton Academy and it turned out it was an apartheid gig. We were the only two white people in the room. It was a strange but enlightening experience. Mm. I mean, in a, sense, in a sense, that's exactly what, what it was like for us when we saw this play. Sarah Fox, are there men-only AA meetings? There are men-only... Uh, are there men-only? I don't know if there are men... No, there are. There are a couple. Uh, there are women-only, and there are um, LGBTQ plus meetings, too. So it's interesting that I would have no issue with that. I would have no... I, I, when I see them, I don't think, oh, that's, that's, you know, that's excluding me. Because I think there's thousands of opportunities for me to see them elsewhere. And I think it does make a difference if they're blackout nights. I think, you know, they're rather than it's the entire... It's just a bit of an experiment, a bit like... Yeah, I, I, I don't mind that. I would really mind an entire run because I think we will have to learn from each other. Yeah, and like you say, that what we got from that play at the Royal Court yeah. and our girls did mm. was we, we discussed it, if only one of us could remember the bloody name of it, but we discussed that for weeks afterwards, didn't we, yeah. that play and what we'd learnt and stuff. So, yeah, and, was, and I have to say we're thoroughly entertained. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was it? I just think... In everything we do, we here should it is. Be it's strong. called for black boys who have considered suicide when this, the when the hue. This is why we couldn't remember yeah, the title. name of the, uh, of the play. It was oh, the yeah. longest so this title. Is the title Listen of to it. this: for black boys who have considered suicide when the hue, as in colour, gets too heavy. That it was one of the most. It was the most. It was excellent epic. Show. It was epic, and every one of those actors, and a number of them, had never performed before, were they? It was yeah, just blew our minds. And imagine if we'd got a ticket mm. and we'd accidentally bought it on a black-only night, and we hadn't gone in, we'd have missed out on that. Oh, it is transfer, Elliot. It's transferring to the West End. Is it? I would fully recommend you go. Please, and see it. it's please so go, good. guys. It's yeah. absolutely brilliant. Elliot, have We're going to go again. If you've seen, if you've seen it, Elliot, we'll be let going us know. again. I mean, the problem is, whenever something transfers to a bigger theatre, I lose something from it, I have mm. to say, because mm. I love that smaller theatre vibe. Saskia, mm. Gay, Saskia Guy asks, when is the first Agony Aunt and Uncle podcast? We're recording it later today. So, yeah. um, so there we go. Um, I think that's everything. We keep nudging Danish parenting down the way. Um, Aaron Bullimore, there's a difference between having safe spaces for people going through trauma and people watching a play. One is necessary to ensure people aren't more traumatised, the other is just discrimination. Mm. There you go. Well, the vast majority of you also think it's wrong uh, to have black-only black only audiences, 82%. Mm. OK, guys, we're going to have to let the Danish parent without us. Um, so, three birthdays. Sarah, Zoe's sister, Sarah Agnew. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Sarah. Happy birthday to you. Sarah. Happy birthday to you, Sarah. Happy birthday to you. Russ out, Russ. Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday, dear Russ. Ouch. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. And it was Linda Beatty's. Was it your 50th yesterday? It was Linda Beatty's birthday yesterday. Happy birthday oh, thanks, to Trina. You. Trina's muting. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Linda. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, birthday to you. you. Well, there we go, guys. And, guys, if you missed the Curly Cooks, it, it we up, we've uploaded the last four episodes that they are available and yeah if you missed the No Name Sunday show it did upload in eventually yesterday oh God, so do nightmare. go and catch that yeah that's in the members area um, and yeah when is Agony and Uncle going up if we're recording it'll be later today? this week love ya guys take care